Good morning. Hello, hello. Welkom. Welkom bij at the, at the Live today. Um, the topic of today is uh, professionalism, professionalism, excuse me, um, how to decipher the code. The last week we spoke about um, how to handle stress and not knowing the rules of the game um, when it comes to the code of conduct can um, deliver a lot of stress. So I'm trying today to uh, lift the fail on that. My name is Angrasje Sleeswijk and I'm a life redesign coach. And as I say myself, I'm trying to make sense out of the nonsense called business. Um, well, professionalism is something that is very important when um, um, doing business or when you want to work at a certain in a certain job. Every environment has rules. And um, the problem with it is that most of the time it's um, um, part factual and part um, um, unwritten. And it's about the unwritten part that I want to talk about. Because sometimes uh, the unwritten part will um, give us the idea that there is some leeway between our social behavior versus our work behavior. There is a difference. Hi, Ariana. There is a difference in behavior. And what that does is it makes sure that um, sometimes, even though you have the grandest resume and the grandest skills, you still fail when it comes to, um, uh, you know, being up to par when it comes to your job. So um, let's let's get down to the basics. The basics are that it's um, almost um, un inevitable that you will take some behavior that you've known. Hey, Jennifer, thank you. <laughs> it's it's uh, very important to know that uh, some behavior you will copy out of your social rig and that's almost um, um, a given because that's what you know, you know. But you have to realize that when you are um, accepted for a job or if you want to um, uh, make connections uh, business-wise, you have to realize that people are looking for a business person and not a friend, even though uh, business relationships can be friendly, you know. Um, um, stay stay in your role. And the role is that if they are looking for a web designer, they don't want a web designer with issues, clear issues. Can you imagine that? That you're talking with somebody um, uh, 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 about a website, something that will um, um, uh, give your uh, business a face. And this person brings all this baggage with the conversation. That would be, you know, um, very strange. And even though this is a laughable example, can you imagine that managers have to deal with several people basically misbehaving, misbehaving because simply they don't, don't know the, the rules of the game, you know? Um, for fact, I can say that uh, one of the things is that people um, don't acknowledge the fact that, um, they were hired because of the value they can bring to the organization, not because of their personal skills, you know, um, um, their uh, uh, personality, let me call it a different way, their personality. People are hired because of what they said they can add value to the working place. And if your social skills or your personality overshadows what you can do, then we have a problem. Or basically we can say the organization has a problem. Why? Because then you will switch your behavior, your social behavior versus your business behavior. And when you have to take business decisions, you will overshadow them with 
your social and uh, um, um, rules and your emotions. So things in business are most of the time factual and built on relationships, but it's very important that you realize that there is a difference between the two. And within both rings, you are, um, uh, you should know the rules. Um, it's it's almost um, like you have, a, um, if, if the rules are not followed, people, you are doing yourself a disservice. Why? We know that you have the skills. We know that you are very, um, how do you call it? Um, um, skilled in a certain way and you can act in a certain way and that would bring uh, value to uh, the workplace. If you um, decide to de behave, eh? people always have this saying, I'm gonna do me, I'm gonna do my thing then I think you are up for a big um, surprise and also a big disappointment, I may add, because we are not looking for your thing. We are looking for the best results. And the best results paired with value give us growth, as I said the last time. Remember, having a strategic eye that you have to have growth potential market share, growth in market share, and growth in um, the, the, the possibility to create money or value that will, in the end, deliver money, you know? So how can you decipher what the rules are um, um, of in the marketplace or in the workplace? What you can do is uh, be very frank when you are preparing for a job interview. Um, one of the things um, that you can uh, um, uh, see is that um, people basically um, use, and I can say it, a bit grandiose words because they want you, they want the, uh, the, the, the words attract the, the, the people with skills and ambition. If you don't have skills and ambition, certain words will, will not resonate with you. So that's what I do. So based on that, you can see that people are expecting a whole lot of you instead of just, you know, um, somebody who wants to do their thing. When you are in uh, hired, when you are hired and you are um, basically given the position, there is a certain pressure. Uh, and this pressure could be that you want to be accepted in the social um, uh, ring, but also that you want to prove yourself professionally. Well, um, before you get into the arena, we expect you to be um, basically skilled enough to carry out what you promised. There is a certain expectation when people uh, hire you. And because of that, they expect that you will hit the ground running. And hitting the ground running means that you um, uh, make use of all that you have invested in, that may be uh, knowledge, schooling, um, other work experience. And now you are ready here to elevate. And that's exactly the attitude that we want in the workplace. We want people who can elevate themselves during all the chaos and during all the problems and still deliver value. That is the strategic expectation. The expectation is not that you come in and then we have to hire a social worker to deal with you and your skills and everything of uh, all kinds of baggage you bring into the organization because then you are doing the organization a disservice, you know? Let's talk about the hierarchy. In every organization, every organization is built like a house. And on every floor, they put a manager. Well, this manager is there to organize the production, the work production, he is not there to manage you and your social problems. Think about it. 
this person has a, a, a has a, a, I'm missing the words, but this person has a, a job to do, a job to do. And uh, his job is to get as much as um, uh, possible work from you to make sure that you can elevate. And his job is to make sure that he can facilitate all the beautiful skills you bring to the table. This person is not your parent. Now, if you're working as a manager um, and you have a social heart, you have to realize that what your your the, your purpose in the organization within the organization is it is not although they say motivate coach help facilitate all these things pertain to the business side of the work so um, when we use certain skills like motivation and coaching and you see for instance somebody who is not mature enough it's not your job to jump in as a parent and help that person. No, it's your job to figure out what the skills of the person are. And because of that, you are able to facilitate until they um, um, reach a certain level. That is coaching. If a certain level is not met within a certain time frame, a reasonable time frame, I should say, then it's your job to make sure that this person finds another place or another environment, but this person is not beneficial for the organization. Well, everything I'm telling you here is maybe a bit harsh because um, we, we, in our social rule or in our social ring, we learn that we have to try and try and try and try to help people to get on their feet, you know, and everybody in, this, in, the, in the friends ring is talking about how can we help so-and-so. This is different in the workplace. You are, we are expect of you to be a full skilled person that can handle her business, you know? Um, that, ask of it, it it's necessary that you have a certain level of maturity you know um, maturity will make sure that um, where, where in the social ring you would have petty conversations and go on and on and on just to prove or make your point in business we basically don't have the time for that and you should know that and having petty discussions with colleagues about little stuff or just to have your way will e e will will hinder your progress you know i spoke to a lady um uh, some weeks ago and and she had problems adjusting to this part she said but what if i'm right and here goes the question do you want to be right or do you want to be happy what what do you choose you know because being right is the price, and then you lost the war because you're, you 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 showed that you're not skilled and mature enough to take on more or better work. Do you want to be happy, or do you want to be right? Yeah. Um. And, and there's a reputation thing here. You know, the way you interact with colleagues should be different than the way you make friends. When you make friends, you almost um, um, make the decision to choose your family. You know, when in the workplace, we are basically forced to work together. <laughs> and this, this uh, unwritten rule um, puts us together in a room and expects us, be based on the skills we said we had, to um, um, reach a certain goal. But this forcing should not be something that we really feel. Work should be going effortlessly. So interaction with colleagues should be on a respectful way, um, but basically 
what we advise is that you stay in your lane and staying in your lane, uh, make sure that you are skilled in, in your work and the things you um, promise to the organization. And the other colleague is skilled in their work and pro um, delivers on their promise to the organization. It is absolutely not your job to make sure that other people are doing their work in a certain way. That's the job of the manager. And if you are a manager, then you have to go back to the facts, the facts given and not um, your emotion, your emotional reaction. If we either good or bad um, is, is basically overdone in the organization. So how do we um, make sure that we figure the, we, we not only figure out the rules, but um, make sure that we elevate with our rules? Um, one of the things you can do is basically um, see how, um, um, notice how people react. Um, basically, when you, uh, in meetings, um, these days we have a lot of Zoom meetings, uh, but how people react to your um, arguments or um, uh, your points, should I say, not arguments, your points uh, during meetings, are you welcomed or are people trying to get away from you because, um, well, even though you think you bring value, other people may feel uh, a different way, you know, so it's very important that you um, pick up the signals. And last week we talked about signals. They are basically facts sending sent out by other people and ignoring them would um, do you a disservice, you know? Um, let's talk about expectations. Expectations are um, high at a certain point. What your job is, is that you bring them into the practical realm of your skills. That means that you don't take a job that is too um, stressful for you to, because um, you either don't have the skills or you have, have to take a longer time to figure out what people want from you. you know? Stay within your lane. Make sure that everything you deliver is delivered according expectations. You know? The expectations, the, the, the staying within your lane and making sure that you um, have um, credibility because every time you deliver in a certain way that builds your credibility and this credibility makes sure that people notice you and that's the proof. So you don't have to walk around boasting about yourself, showing people how great you are. What you have to do is make sure that your skills and the work you deliver are a, are sync, uh, are a synchronity together, and they make sure that um, people notice you. And believe me, people are watching you even when you are not watching them or not aware. So importance, the importance of deciphering the code means that you take time on building this profile of yourself um, towards who you want to be. What do you want to portray? How do you want to be seen? And of course, in the social ring, we say, uh, I don't care what people think about me. But in the workplace, I would care about what people think about me, especially during times like this, in a crisis time. Why? Because in a crisis time, people management is forced to take decisions, to make decisions based on people who have showed their value each and every time. So credibility in a crisis time will uh, make sure that people um, will protect you towards firing because they can count on you, you know? So trust, even though trust is a valuable thing in the social and in the professional ring, they are different. 
when it comes to um, the effects they have on your life, you know? Very much um, true that if you, um, um, apply for a job, the expectations both on both sides were high. You get into a, a, a job and you notice during the time frame that there is just not a fit. And the fit means that there are no, um, uh, you, you, you cannot either show your skills, um, you are not uh, appreciated and appreciated, you should bring in a certain, um, um, you should take a certain way because I don't mean it in an emotional way, but appreciate it as the skillful person who delivers. Um, that, that is what I mean. So it's important that you make sure that it's not uh, a guessing game, you know, when people deal with you. Who will you be today? You know, they have to be sure that what you bring to the table is a serious um, person, a serious professional, serious business person who delivers on their promise. And basically that is what people are looking for, you know? To get to that, that part of um, being a credible person or professional, that means that you have to go back and look at what you have versus what you have to gain. Sometimes it's a personality thing. Sometimes it's um, um, uh, thinking that one social is the same as work, you know, and the misconception about that, it, uh, about the two can get you in trouble. So go back to the drawing board and make sure that you um, write down the expectations you had before getting into a job or taking a job or taking a project on a project, you know? Make sure that you write down what the expectations were or are and put down what um, um, is happening in real life and then draw up the balance because what it will either show that either you have to change your method, you have to make sure that you make use of different resources than you are doing now, or you have to um, look in the mirror and admit, this is not the place for me. And you know what? There is no shame in that. You know, if you notice that a place is not um, um, giving you life, because even though it's work, it should give you some sort of stimulus energy to make sure that every day you can deliver in a certain way, you know? So if it doesn't do that, then you have to look at your, uh, 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 to yourself and make a decision. And this decision is based not on emotion, but based on the long-term. And this is how you build a strategic eye because you're not busy with situations, but you're busy with the long-term. And what you are doing today will affect you, the next two years, the next five years, the next 10 years of your life, even though everybody in the social ring can say, yeah, you're right, I would, would have done the same. No, when it comes to business, you take your own decisions and your own decisions means that you make a factual uh, assessment of what is going on. Is it you, is it them, or is it a combination? Working towards the code, working within a code will make sure that your life stabilizes because what it does, it makes sure that you are, like I said, a trustworthy person, but it also builds confidence within you. You know, uh, confidence uh, is built one step at a time. Every time you deliver on your promise, you have certainty that, yes, I'm, I'm a good skilled professional. I know what is expected to me and people can trust me. And because of that behavior, you will go on to bigger and better uh, jobs because you know you have certainty that what is expected, you can deliver.
right? Well, time flies, they say, when you're having fun. Well, um, I hope to see you next week. This is what uh, I wanted to bring today to the table. I hope you I hope you had something to gain to it with it and see you next week. Right? Bye bye. Love you.